Okay, everyone, welcome back. Stephen and John from Davenridge European Martial Arts School. We're starting in a slightly different position this time. The reason for that is we got a question from Mo Brooks about fighting with an improvised weapon against a traditional weapon. And I wanted to tell you a story about a fight I was in in Kent, England. While in this while I was with this group of people, they, we were all reenactors. Uh, there was three couples, three guys, three girls. No, there was four couples, four guys, four girls. And uh, we were all young reenactors and at this barbecue and somebody said, hey, let's gear up and play a little bit. Because, you know, we have all the equipment, so why not? So we started getting ready to play, and one guy put on like a full suit of armor, another guy put on half suit of armor, another guy put on a gambeson, a helmet, and gauntlets, and all I had was my leather boots, woolen trousers, and linen shirt. And then we grabbed swords and spears. I had a single-handed sword, another person had a spear, Another guy had a sword and buckler, and another guy had a pole axe. Yeah, it was an interesting combination of weapons. And we're all having a good time, and then somebody yelled, Get the yank! So I did the only thing that you could possibly do in a situation like that. I took off running. Absolutely. And as I was running past in the, the yard, I saw a lawn chair. So I grabbed a lawn chair. Still had my sword, but I had my lawn chair. There's our improvised weapon against the traditional weapon. So this will work against a pole cue or a spear. I've got this, and I've got my buckler. Now, my shield, my buckler, what we think about a lot is, go ahead and stab me, you know, setting it aside like this. That thing is so quick, without going fast, go ahead and trick me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's going to be really hard to get. So when you're fighting with something like this, you cannot stay at their distance. Go ahead and do that again. Mm -hmm. And that's about the only thing that you can get in this point. Because you've got a close measure. Right? As he stabs me, if I turn it, I can then just let the whole thing drop as I come in and I can do whatever I so choose at him. Because I can. Give me all your money. Wait a minute, wrong video. Thank you. I could hold it by one of the legs, but I don't like that. I will tell you from personal experience fighting with a chair, as weird as that statement sounds, it's much better to hold it up here and then let the back rest on your forearm. So I'm basically holding it like that. That way I don't need to support all the weight. And as he comes through, I can just turn it. And then come in, do whatever I need to do. If he cuts down at me, right, I can get this up, but that's gonna be really hard because this thing's heavy. He does that, and then, jam in. Now, he's going to do the only thing he can do, which is defend with the Q. So I'm going to hit him in two different places. <laughs> Hello. Thanks, Todd. Remember, re-stomp the groin. Things I learned from Master Kin. All right. As we're coming in, <laughs> and we're in these kinds of positions, I can use the chair to defend, or I can use the sword to defend, but I don't need to rely on each one individually. I can combine them. This is when we're doing other sword and secondary tool techniques, it's a transfer. So as he comes through, I can hook, transfer, so I can come in, and I'm doing that transfer just to really throw it to the side. Or if he comes in on the other side, I can use this to cover, 
transfer, and then again, look how I'm turning it. And at this point, I'm just gonna, gonna drop it. He can get it out. There's no problem with that. But what is, what's the problem with, for you with that? It's adding more time for me to get it out of there. I have to untangle it, and it's been pushed to the floor, so I have to get that point all the way back up to between me and you. Yes, but that's the second thing that happens. The first thing that happens is that you have to realize your point got moved. Ah, surprise. The best time to hit somebody is when they're confused. They're thinking. And you can create that confusion by changing the scenario, the situation. Doesn't need to be a big change, but it could be, such as dropping a chair on their weapon, which is a unique statement to say in a sword fighting video. Yeah, just drop a chair on their weapon. It works, though. <laughs> so when we're in here, as we're fighting, now at this point, I've left my face exposed. Would you agree? I would. I'm not going to move. Go ahead and stab. I'm going to go to the side. Easy to get there. Would you agree? Very. Go ahead and do it again. <clears throat> at this point, I'm now using it like the guard of a dagger. Yeah. And now, what do you think I should do? Drop it? Yeah, relax my arm. Yep. And then just... I don't even need to hit hard. No. Would you agree? I would definitely agree. <laughs> but remember, if you do that to your friends, they will cease to be your friends after that. So, be careful with those techniques. You help me throw your weapon away if you've got another one to work with. This happened to me in the fight and I have this video as well. As we were fighting, or this picture, it's not a video, it's this picture from 1999. There was all three of them and I lost my weapon. But I got in tight and I was in this kind of position and I was holding them like this and I had the three of them and if you can see where I've got my leg pushed into his chest I've got his spear covered his cues in front of the other guy and his spearheads in front of the other guy so they're gonna keep coming these two guys can easily leave would you agree I would yeah that's when you just turn it this way for a strike and then I'm not gonna do it drop your chair <laughs> and as soon as you drop your chair, let me get that off your neck. Thank you. You jump this guy. The surprise factor is happening again to me with the chair on me. Because right. now I've got a chair binding, not just my tool, but it's on my body now. And that's going to pull me a little bit off center. Which I'm going to have, a, we, we've all seen this anywhere. I have a natural reaction to pull back from something that's yanking me down. Yeah. And... Again, the first thing you have to do is realize something's changed. And that moment of confusion gives you the opportunity to go somewhere else. So if I don't have my two tools, I have to understand that when I come in here, because you could easily trick me and get to yeah. lots of different places because I'm trying to defend myself. Go and do that again. And then again, I just put it on his body. And then when he falls down, I just sit down and have a beer because there's nothing he can do. Let me get this off you without hurting you. Thank you very much. So this is actually a fight I was in, in the UK in 1999, in a guy, his name was Martin, in Martin's backyard. I don't remember Martin's last name. I wish I did. Uh, Martin and Dave, they were partners that ran Cosmeston Medieval Village reenactments. A lot of fun with those two gentlemen. This was some of it. So just a real quick answer for Eric about using a improvised weapon against a traditional weapon. I can do the same kind of thing with sword, but spear is easier to see at this. Do you have anything you'd like to add about what you felt on that side of it? Well, so looking at it here right now is the biggest piece here is, again, no offhand tools reused any differently 
whether it's a center grip shield, a double strap shield, a buckler, a dagger, or a chair, its job is to bind up the other person's tool and add more time to them, whether it's mental or it's physical of the removal of their blade from what is happening. Right. Um, so running into that, that same concept, it doesn't matter what it is, still blends in. Cool. It doesn't matter your tool because our weapon's right here. Right. And it's the same stuff running into it here. So a little bit of fun with sword and chair against spear. Johnny, thank you very much. You're very welcome, sir. You know, next time we want to take a break, I'll grab a chair and that could yeah. be kind of you fun. You sit on me and everything? Take care. Bye, everyone. Yeah. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please hit the subscription button below and the notification icon. We have videos coming out every week.